There's really not much to an acoustic panel. All you need is something to soak up the sound. I'm going to be using rock wool. And you need to build a frame to put that in. And I'm using three quarter inch plywood for that. I need to take the full sheet and break it down into two pieces that I can cut on a table saw. I'm doing that on my workbench and I'm using my straight edge guide plus the circular saw to cut it into two pieces. I already knew how thick this stuff is, but I thought I would film it to show it in the video. It's five and a half inches. I'm gonna set my saw to that and then cut both of those larger pieces of plywood into strips that are 48 inches long. And I'm building six panels and I couldn't get enough out of a full sheet to get everything. So I'm gonna cut a strip off the edge of the second sheet of plywood, except this time I'm gonna do a freehand, cut it slightly oversized, then cut it down to the five and a half on the table saw to give me a nice clean cut. Next I can cut the top and bottom to length and I set up a stop block on my miter saw to do that. The side panels are already cut to length. That was actually the first cut that I made when I cut the full sheet in half. There are several ways that I could join the corner of the frame because it really doesn't need to be that strong. You could use just regular butt joints, but I decided to get a little bit fancier and cut rabbits. It also kind of works out with what I'm doing next, which is cutting a groove for the spline. The spline will hold the cloth in after, and the groove actually works out better if it lines up with that rabbit. You can kind of see what I'm talking about here when you put it together. I need to remove a small amount from the corner. I'm gonna use my trim router to do that. With all the parts made, I can start assembly. And I'm using polyurethane construction adhesive as the glue and firing in some one and a quarter inch brads to hold it all together. As I get one done, I check to make sure that it's square and then set it aside while I work on the rest. I let them dry overnight and the next day I trimmed off the excess that's sticking out and I used my trim router again and then I did some sanding to slightly round over the corners and get rid of any chip out on the face veneer on this not very good plywood. The face veneer on this is almost thin enough to see through. I'm not kidding. Now when the fabric goes on these and the splines are driven in, it will pull the fabric tight and that will pull the sides in. So to try to prevent that, I'm adding a brace here on the front. This is just half inch plywood. And I fired in some pins and you can see they came out through the bottom, but that's not a big deal because there's just insulation inside there. No fingers. So I'll get it cleaned up and put on a couple of coats of water-based polyurethane, sanding lightly in between coats. And then off camera, I built the stands from more three quarter inch plywood, basically using up the scraps that I had. And then I took those out back and I sprayed them black. I let the paint dry on the stands and the poly dry on the frames for several hours. And then I could put the two together. Once again, I'm using polyurethane construction adhesive. And then I'll set the frame on top and line it up properly and then drive in a couple of two inch screws. With that done, I could get the rock wool put in. I got the panel sitting on the bench face down. I want to do the backs first, just to get some practice in. I figure by the time I get all six of the backs done, I'll be good enough to do the fronts. Now, I'm not sure if this glue is actually needed here, but I put it in anyway, figured it couldn't hurt. And then I took a little bit of trial and error to get the size of the spline right so that it goes in and it pulls the fabric in, but it doesn't break the plywood apart because that would be bad. We don't want that to happen. And to be honest, this was the wild card in this build. I really wasn't sure if this was gonna work the way I thought it would. This is very similar to the way window screens are put together. And as the spline goes down into the groove, it pulls the fabric down with it and makes the cloth nice and tight.
And then it's just a matter of trimming off the excess with a very sharp knife. And then I can flip the panel over and do the front. Except I got a little bit more fancy and use walnut for the splines, thinking that it would be an interesting contrast. You know, make the edge of the plywood look more elegant. When I had all six done, I couldn't resist lining them up in my workshop and took this picture right here and then carried them one by one down to my basement and set them up down there to take a couple of pictures as well. Having all six on one wall is not the normal configuration for these. They'll actually be three on one wall and three on the opposite wall. I still need to figure out the exact placement for them. But I did do another room measurement after I had them in place. And here you can see the room before I put the panels in and here's what it looks like after. I'm actually getting more of an improvement from this than I expected. When you're chipping away at the problem like I've been doing, it's encouraging to see significant progress.